Okay, chapter eight. This is the fourth stage of our change process. It's um, ongoing evaluation. Let's say we were driving across the country. We wouldn't wait until the end of our trip to look at our map and see if we had landed in the right place. We would check it out along the way so we can make course corrections as needed to overcome unforeseen obstacles. Review what is working with your client. What is making them excited? Was it their first 5K, their first mile, buying an item of clothing that was the next size down? You can reuse the tools you use to start to compare. Maybe, maybe have the client complete another wellness inventory or another wheel of life to see where they're at. Part of ongoing evaluation is exploring how other people are re reacting to the changes your client is making. Losing weight can make one's spouse feel threatened or taking time to exercise can take away from a friendship. Explore with your client how it would feel to involve others in their change and ask for support. You can explore your client you can explore with your client the concept that we do train others how to treat us. By always saying yes to more work being piled on us, we are telling people that we can be taken advantage of. Retraining people will take time and effort and starts with an awareness of what message we are sending. This can be an area to explore with your client. And I know that has I've gotten older and busier in my life. Um, I've had to learn this, um, how to, you have to teach people how to treat you. And it's really amazing what can happen if you are intentional with this and pay attention to it. However, coaching is not just about accomplishing a single goal. Coaching is about helping people transform their lives. Sometimes that transformation is about helping people through barriers. We can help someone lay out a plan, be accountable for that plan, even have success with the plan, and then it seems they've run into a brick wall. What happened? Is it likely they have run into either an interior or an exterior barrier? Interior, internal barriers are the hardest to master. These belief systems involve our sense of ourselves and our abilities. They are our filters for all the input we see, hear, and feel. This is where we look at um, things like your belief system, self-esteem and self-worth, self-doubt, self-efficacy, any misperceptions you might have, negative talk, irrational beliefs. Well, we cannot, just a second here, I need to find my notes on this. We can't dive into psychotherapy with our clients. However, there is deeper work we can encourage to help our clients shift their behavior about themselves and shift their beliefs about themselves and break through a barrier that may be holding them back. There's just... Um, a few of the, the ways you can do this. You can explore the impact of change. Has the person's self-esteem or self-concept changed? And you don't need to write these down. They are on page 178 in your manual. You can get more information there. Um, review motivation. Explore the spiritual quest. Journal. Perfect the present. Um, challenge to be more non-critically caring but confidential um, can bring out the best in someone self-actualization Maslow emphasized being who you really are not what someone else thinks you should be and coach the client in gremlin fighting and again all of these are on page 178 you can review those on your own There's a great deal of power in what we say about ourselves. One of the greatest ways we disempower ourselves is by allowing our inner critic to rule. This inner critic 
or what Michael refers to as a gremlin, can be very destructive. Um, this, this is the tenant in your head, rent space up there. Gremlin fighting can be useful when someone seems to be stuck in a pattern of negative self-talk. Things like, I can never do anything right, I will never be able to lose weight. If you go back to your Mastering Life's Energies book, this is very similar to Monkey Mind. Gremlin fighting is really doing no more than looking, seeing, and telling the truth, and then taking action. Our inner gremlin usually operates out of fear. Engaging in conversation with this gremlin is like arguing with a toddler having a tantrum. It just increases the tantrum. The five steps to fighting this are recognize the gremlin for what it is, know ahead of time what your gremlin likes to say, and be aware if you are particularly vulnerable at this time. Read the halt sign, which is the next slide below. Hungry, angry, lonely, tired, also when you're ill. Generally, we give in to this gremlin when we are hungry or angry or lonely, tired, etc. The next step, then, is to refute the talk. And this is not true. If this is not true, then what is true? Going back to um, 306, Mastering Life Energies, Monkey Mind. Um, if you remember all of the things that you learned about Monkey Mind, those are thoughts that we have that are not true. And you need to go through your thinking and really take a look at, all right, what is the truth about this? And be able to be aware of it and recognize it. The third one, remove or shift the gremlin from your awareness, throw them out of the car or workplace or wherever you are. It's whatever, it's however you deal with your monkey mind or your gremlin. Regain confidence. This is when you can review past successes. What have you done in the past that's worked well? Return to the present. Focus on the here and now. As a coach, you can help your client become aware of gremlin statements and aware of how often success triggers self-doubt and self-worth questions of the inner critic. And again, there's the, when you're most vulnerable to the inner critic is when you're hungry, angry, lonely, tired, or when you're ill, or you may have another time that you're more vulnerable. As you talk to clients about some of these barriers, you will often run into emotions and issues that they have been dealing with for a long time. Don't be afraid of the emotions, but know the top 10 reasons to refer to a mental health professional. They're on page 183 of your manual. You don't have to stop coaching, but sometimes you do have to tell your client the only way you can continue to coach them is if they are seeing a mental health professional. We have some external barriers to change as well as the internal barriers. And this, this is a list of a few of the external barriers um, that we can run into. Changes in environmental demands, criticism instead of support, peer health norms, um, effect upon interpersonal dynamics and relationships. There's 10 ways to coach through the external barriers to change. And this is on page 183 of your manual. We'll go through these. Um, use a strength-based positive psychology approach. Process the feelings behind the challenge. Employ strategic thinking. Don't jump to a solution. Use readiness for change theory. Co-create a plan with an experimental attitude. Link action steps with motivation to be well. Congruent, but not necessarily comfortable. Help your clients succeed by helping them be accountable to themselves. Coach for connectedness and celebrate their successes. And that takes us to chapter 9. So that's the end of chapter 8.
and next we'll go on to chapter 9.